Talking to yourself again, eh? Oh, yeah. Well, I give these babies a, a little pep talk every morning. It keeps them on their toes, you know what I mean? Hey, you got a haircut. Looks good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, I'm starting to feel better. I thought I'd, uh, you know, look a little better. And I'll tell you one thing. These old tires are starting to feel like retreads. Well, you keep it up, then. I intend to. You know, you really surprised me. What do you mean? Well, when you first came in here, you seemed, well, like you just wanted to give up. And now all you want to really do is walk. <laughs> yeah. It's true. But the credit don't go to me, it goes to Natalie. Well, I've never seen anyone make such incredible progress. Yeah, well, like I said, I couldn't have done it without her. Yeah, she's quite a lady. She sure is. By the way, do you know where she is? She was supposed to be here ten minutes ago. You mean you haven't heard? Heard what? She's been taken off your case. I don't understand this, Natalie. You have forced me to choose by not allowing me to run my department the way I see fit. I'm just concerned about the fact that you've been spending three quarters of your time with one patient, John Doe. It has been time worth spent, believe me. I'm not worried about your work, Natalie. You're a very valuable therapist. But what about all the other people who need your help? We have several very good therapists here who are working with those people under my supervision. I simply cannot countenance this almost uh, obsessive interest you have in Mr. Doe. This obsessive interest, as you call it, is what has gotten that man back on his feet. A man who you thought would never walk again. I'm not denying that. You've done a miraculous job. <sighs> Believe me, it has been no miracle. It has been very, very, very difficult. And you've taken him over the roughest part. Now let another therapist take over the rest of the treatment. No. John and I have developed a rapport, a support system. Don't you see that it's similar to a therapist working with a patient is almost identical to a, a, a psychiatrist working with a patient? If I abandon him now, it might do irrevocable harm. That's just my point. He's too dependent on you. It's time to cut the umbilical cord. If he's as determined to walk as you say he is, he'll do it even with another therapist. He trusts me. He'll have to learn to trust somebody else then. I want you off the case. And as far as this letter is concerned, I trust you'll reconsider your resignation. I'm afraid that's out of the question. Good day, Doctor.
sorry. Who? Are you all right? What? I said, I'm sorry. Are you all right? Yes. What are you doing here? Well, I'm jogging. I thought you were asleep. Beautiful morning like this? Come on. No way. Come on. Let's stop. What? Jogging. Otherwise, the muscles are going to stiffen up. Right. Well? Well, what? What are you doing here? This is starting to sound repetitive. I am jogging. Right. You said before. What else would I be doing dressed like this? Windsurfing? Following me. Funny. I thought you were following me. Why on earth would I do that? Then I guess it's got to be fate, then. Or a bloody unusual coincidence. Well, just so long as we're here, why don't we uh, run together? I'm going home. Uh, Holly. Uh, I could uh, drive back to the house with you. No, I thank you. I've had enough. I'm going to walk back. Look, I need to talk to you before I go to work. Ah, oh, not this morning, huh? I have a million and one things to do. You really can't be infuriating, you know that. No, I didn't know that. We have to talk sometime. Right, we will. Just, just not this morning, okay? You can be a very stubborn woman. And infuriating? Right. Give me a hand with those laces down there. Sure. I'm on my way to Moreno's office. Hey, look, partner. Dr. Moreno is in charge here. If he says Natalie's been taken off your case, there is nothing you can do about it. You've got a lot to learn about me, pal. Unfortunately, I ain't going to be around to teach you. Where do you think you're going? I got a certain bone to pick with a certain doctor. He's the one that arranged all this, isn't he? He's doing what he thinks is best. What, best for me? I'll decide what's best for me. What's best for me is not to be turned over to some therapist who thinks of me just as a piece of another... Roger, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Look, would you would you mind waiting outside? This might get a little personal. What's your idea of ditching me, huh? I'm not ditching you. I just think it's time for both of us to move on. What do you mean, move on? You have made incredible progress. You don't need me anymore. Look, you're down to one brace. That's wonderful. What are you, nuts? Does this look like I'm about to enter the Olympics Luke, or something? Luke, you have made enormous progress. Thanks to you, Natalie. Any other therapist could have done it. No, no, no. No, darling, I ain't talking about massaging my legs and showing me how to, how to strengthen the muscles. You made me believe in myself again. You made it possible for me to stand up, Natalie. You didn't give anybody else a chance. All right, I had a bad attitude. You came on the scene, you busted me on it. But I trusted you, I opened up to you, and I don't do that with just and anybody. And that is just the problem. Dr. Marino feels that I've become too personally involved in your case. So what? So I just think it's better if, from now on, you just start doing things on your own. You think it's better? You don't. You don't really think that's better, do you? What I think, Luke, doesn't really matter anymore. I resigned from the hospital. You what? And you will make it. I have faith in you. Marino pressured you into that too, didn't he? Luke, please don't make this any harder than it is. This isn't right, Natalie. You do realize that sooner or later, I am not going to be around for you. Look, I know that, damn it. But I think the least you can do is stick around until the job's finished. I think you owe me that, don't you? I mean, it's only decent, isn't it? Huh? Let me take care of this. Roger! Luke. Roger. Luke. Roger! Don't do this. Come on, pal. Lead me down to this barbarian's office. Take a left. And in order for me to be able to walk again, I need to continue working with Natalie. You're exaggerating, Mr. Doe. Am I? Check this out, pal. Very impressive. <laughs> yeah, well, it ain't exactly Fred Astaire, yet. But I can approximate walking. Now, look at this. This is my first day in one brace. 
One brace, Dr. Moreno, and there's one reason for it. Natalie Dearborn, she's the best. You know it, and I know it. Fine. You've obviously improved to the point where any one of our other therapists could continue your treatment. You're not hearing me. I want Natalie. It's apparent you have a great deal of respect for her. You're damn right I do. She, uh, wouldn't have influenced you to come here, would she? Nobody influenced me to come here. And another crack like that, and you're gonna need a wheelchair yourself. Hostility isn't going to get you anywhere, Mr. Doe. Okay, all right. Look, I'm sorry. Why are you doing this to me? I'm making a very simple request. It's a little more complicated than you think. I think I know what it is. It's not all that complicated. It has to do with money, doesn't it? You don't want to fork out any more of the hospital's money on a charity case. That's untrue. This hospital gives everyone the same treatment, rich or poor. Then prove it. Natalie Dearborn is the head of the art therapy department. She's a highly qualified therapist. Too qualified for a charity case. That's not true. All I'm trying to do is to make sure those talents are shared. There are other patients who need her expertise. Look, I understand. I'll work harder. I won't take up as much of her time. I don't know. You don't know. Okay, well, that proves my point. It's really the money, isn't it? No, you're wrong. Dr. Lockman, I've never been a charity case before. I stand on my own... I stand on my own feet. I pay my own way. And as soon as I can walk again, I promise you, I will give back every cent that this hospital has spent on me. I give you my word. I believe you. Look, I don't want to lose Miss Dearborn either. But you must understand, there are other patients who want to get well just as much as you do. I understand that. I do. Please, Dr. Moreno, just give me a little more time. Please. <laughs> I'm attached to Natalie, yeah. I'm not in love with her or anything, if that's what you're worried about. I am in love, but, man, I'm in love with a girl back home. And I want to walk back to her. I want to walk back into her life. As far as I can see, there's only one person that can help me walk. That's Natalie Dearborn. My girl deserves a man who can walk. Celia, it's Holly. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I wake you up? Oh, then it's a good thing I did. Do you want some company while you run your errands? Oh, I see. No, no, I understand. Uh, another time, huh? Waterfront Clinic, Miss Spencer. Bobby, it's Holly. Oh, Holly, hi. Would you hold on a minute, please? Just fill this out, and as soon as you're finished, give it back to me, and the doctor will be right with you. Holly, I'm sorry. The clinic is a madhouse this morning. But exactly a relaxing day off from the sound of it. Oh, I don't mind. I'm just glad people are starting to come back here. So am I. Listen, would you like me, uh, would you like to meet me for lunch? Oh, I'd love to, but you know, we are so swamped, I think I'm going to be lucky if I get to grab a bite on the run. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, maybe another time, huh? Jogging. Relieves tension. Can't you see how relaxed I am? Oh, yeah, you're so relaxed, you're practically 
falling down. Yeah, well, maybe I should run a bit. No, I think you need to sit. Sit, sit, sit. I, don't you think you're overdoing this jogging bed? It's just a little. No, I just need a few more miles, Rose. There comes a point where you cease to be tired, where it all ceases to hurt. You get to a stage of euphoria. Wow, like a joy of being a sleek, healthy animal. Obviously, you haven't reached that point yet. Oh, well, on the run home. On the way home, with you. You ran all the way here from your house? Are you yeah. crazy? That's halfway across town. You're right. I am exhausted. Oh, no kidding. Hey, come your phone, love. Yeah. Sure. Right. sure. Now, there comes a point where you can't let something like this defeat you. You cannot let it get the better of you. Right. It's the commissioner here. Yeah. Send my limo around to Kelly's, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. Well, at least it's in the right hands for a change. You've come uh, a long way. Tell me about it. A little away from my place to water? No, no, I mean you. Huh? Look, you came to Fort Charles, you didn't know anybody, and you're the police commissioner phoning for your limo. Yeah, pretty nifty, eh? It's got a lot of class, <laughs> Robert. Or a lot of nerve. No, it takes nerve to get where you are. Class yeah? to stay there, and you will. Ah, uh, well, love, you know, you know, he's sort of forgetting something here. You know, a friend of mine who sort of helped me a little bit along the way. Mm. Yeah, you know, he was a turning point in my life. Before that, I was sort of living. Well, at least now I can bloody well appreciate it. <laughs> well, you know something? I bet if he were here, he'd be real proud of you. Yeah, if he were here. Uh, that's my wheels, Boy, baby. Oh, and I that is service. Service <laughs> with a smile. Bye. Bye. doing here? What does it look like I'm doing? Nothing as usual. Get off my back and stay off. I told you to stay near a phone. There's one right back there. Put that beer down and come over here. What? I said put the beer down. We got important business to discuss. So I can drink and talk business at the same time. Walk here, you can hardly walk and chew gum at the same time. You know, one of these days, I'm gonna go a little too far here. Really? What if I do? <laughs> we'll just skip it. I just don't need the wisecracks. Well, I don't need you drinking in the morning when we got important things to talk about. Sit down. Like what? Like the kind of thing that you need a clear head for. We're gonna torch the clinic. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And we gotta move fast. Lago wants that place out of the way as much as we do. That's interesting. What kind of action you need from me? You. You get us whatever we need for tomorrow night. That's easy. All we need is a couple of cans of gasoline, a bunch of racks. And if Largo wants a fire, I'll give him a fire. I'll burn that damn clinic down. There'll be a fire all over the waterfront. You can see for miles. Just make sure they don't see us. We're discreet now. Remember, Augie? Yes, discreet. Well, what are you waiting for? Move it. Yeah, take this. You buy whatever you need. You buy a little extra. Tomorrow night, Rick Weber's clinic is gonna go down in a blaze of glory. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> well, you never cease to amaze me. Listen, pal, I told you you had a lot to learn about me. Well, I've never known Marino to give in to anyone. Oh, I guess nobody had a good enough reason. Well, what was yours? My life, pal. My life. No problem. I want to talk to you, Natalie. I told you, it's out of my hands. I, yeah, I know that. But uh, this is important. I talked to Moreno. I asked you not to. Well, you know me. I always got to do things my own way. Roger, could you give us a second? Thank you. <clears throat> Pat, Moreno's a stubborn guy. I could have told you that. Well, I still, I figured there had to be a way to get to him. Yo, you don't know hospital bureaucracy. No, I guess I don't. I just went in there and spilled my guts out. Oh, Luke. I told him that I wanted you to work with me. I told him that the two of us were a team, that we were making amazing progress, and that I don't think I can go on without you. You can, Luke. You can do anything. You don't need me to walk. You don't believe that, really, do you? Yes. 
I think it's better if I go. I thought my case was important to you. Don't do this. Don't you know how difficult this is for me, too? What is so difficult? Will you just walk on down the hall? Where? Moreno's office. I just talked to him. He won't listen to me. Well, I think he will. He wants to take me off your case. He made that very clear. That's funny. That isn't what he told me. What are you talking about? What do you mean what I'm talking about? I'm talking about what Moreno said. He said you were a great therapist. He said that uh, the way I was improving, you ought to keep working with me. And he certainly doesn't want you to put in your resignation. And I think it's time the two of you got this whole thing straightened out, because my muscles are starting to atrophy. I don't believe it. Are you telling me that you convinced him to let me keep working with you? For heaven's sakes, Natalie, will you just close your mouth and go on down the hall so we can get back to work? You! You really are a miracle worker. No, oh, it's a dirty job. Somebody's got to do it. I will be right back. Yeah, okay. Make a snappy. I'm getting bored. Okay, listen, then. In the meantime, walk faster, better, stronger, I, I and it. lift will each get, leg. Will you get out of here? I just saved your job. Give lift me a break. Lift each leg. I'm lifting them. I'm lifting them. I'm lifting them, See baby. Ya. She looks happy. What yeah. about it's a celebration, pal. What, you win the lottery? Better. I just want another chance to walk. Well, that's always a good thing to hear. Yeah. Listen, Jed, I would really like to take Natalie out to lunch. Mm -hmm. Stepping out, huh? Well, that's good. She deserves it. Putting up with an ornery cuss like you all these weeks. Yeah. I got a small problem, though, see? No lunch money. I was wondering if I could... Uh... Yeah, you got it. I really hate asking you, Jeff. Hey, don't even think about it. I, I like seeing that smile on your face. <laughs> Listen, I'll pay you back every cent. Now, you're pulling my leg. I know you're good for it. Besides, it do, do you good to get out around people. Blow off some of that steam you build up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the only thing is, I, I don't think I should go out, you know, early spring like this in little shorts. I think I maybe ought to have some clothes or something. Well, it's no problem. We'll just go down to the town shop, get you some duds, and go with that new haircut you got there. Put it on my tab, will you? Mm -hmm. I only owe you about $185,000. Oh. oh, Liz. I've got to be out of my mind. Tension. Tension, tension. What I need is a nice... Sauna. Just the job. like a nice relaxing sauna. Take your mind off things. Robert! General Hospital will continue in a moment.